How's it going, everybody? This is Mark with Kelly Co. Metal Detectors here. I have Jason, quarter hoarder, as you may know him. And this is the Kelly Co. Treasure Hunter Spotlight. So thank you, Jason, for joining us. I am super stoked to be here, Mark. Thank you for thinking of me to be a guest. I love, love Kelly Co. Big fan, big fan of yours, and I'm glad to be a part of it. Oh, thank you. And I certainly really enjoyed um, how our story of meeting each other in person at Pound the Ground. That was a uh, pretty awesome and uh, just a great way to finally see the person that I saw on YouTube videos and saw these people that uh, were surrounding you and just having a good time. So I'll always remember that. I, I, it was great. And even though you told me when you met me, you were really disappointed at first, I'm <laughs> glad I grew up with you. I, I'm glad I grew up with you. Oh my <laughs> goodness. Hey, that was the main reason I went to that event, is to meet mm -hmm. cool people like you and other people that I've spoken with. And uh, man, what a fun event that was. I'm glad we were able to meet and keep this uh, relationship going. Oh, same here. And, uh, you know, why I wanted to have this video series is because obviously with the current climate, what's going on, we have a lot of people that are indoors, getting a little cabin fever, looking for things to do. And I thought to myself, who'd be the perfect person to help educate a little bit and talk about, there's so many things to metal detect and, and treasure hunting uh, one of those things that I, I know that would be great for people to understand is how to ID their finds and how to clean their finds uh, after they go metal detecting. Absolutely. And I'm sorry that your expert couldn't be there, but I'll try to step in and do the best job. <laughs> you are the uh, expert. Trust me. Uh, after all the videos. Uh, yeah. Uh, it, Mark, that is half the fun of the hobby. Half the fun is finding it. And mm. then other is what the heck did I find? What is this? metal piece of dirty bent up metal and right. that creates a whole nother layer that's what you get to bring home and keep that excitement building and oh i mean over the years you learn a lot you learn what to do you learn what not to do and and i'm half kidding but i'm half not i'm definitely no expert i've ruined things i still occasionally ruin things but i've gotten better because it, there, there, there's no one way that i could say use this method it'll clean everything you find mark because I'd be telling you, a, a, you know, an untruth. You really have to look at each piece almost individually and look at it from every angle to see what kind of shape it's in. Mm -hmm. I've had pieces that were metal and I would put them in an electrolysis tank, Mark, and it does a great job. All the rust gone. Yeah, you know, I'm like, oh man, this is like butter. I'll put it in. But once in a while, you'll get something where over the centuries in the ground, it's actually held together by rust. Rust is a chemical change to the iron. Mm -hmm. So when I took that rust away, my item literally fell apart. Oh. And, you know, that's a bummer. So you yeah. gotta look at it. You gotta see, is it structurally sound? Can I put it in electrolysis? Can I, can I even go at it with a, a toothpick? Uh, should I put this in water? A lot of people mm -hmm. will get just soapy water and clean their copper coins, but will it take the patina off? It might. Um, now, what, what is that exactly? Because uh, when I was at Florida Hunt 6, recently uh there was some talk of the patina on a coin and how that can uh just take a really valuable coin that has been sitting in the ground and if you remove that it kind of makes it worthless is that right well you know you know i i, I can't really be a big judge on value of things mm -hmm. you know that's a whole nother part if you're going to buy and sell things now traditionally speaking you know the rule is never clean your coins you'll devalue them my coins are for my own enjoyment to look at. So I don't look at it as a value mm -hmm. in that regard. But what I will say is it took 150 years or more for that coin to get that patina. And if I just rub it right off, well, you know what? It looks like a coin that I can go to the corner of a coin shop and buy. It gives it character. It gives it that special aspect of it. So, and at first I used to clean them all up. I'd get a silver coin. I would get all that black tarnish off. Mm -hmm. But oh, I love that because that gives it character. You know what I mean? You can't recreate that. Um, so I like to leave the patina on as much as I can. You know so, what's funny? You were talking about the black coins. Uh, at the old Kelico Museum, we had a display with a bunch of the uh, uh, silver cobs I believe that, you know, from the Spanish 1715 fleet and the horror story, I can just imagine this is just picking something up like that and chucking it back out in the water. Hopefully not. Let's say you put it in your trash pouch and throw it away, but even uh, that's even worse. Um, you know, I'm thinking about that for new beginners is 
kind of that treasure and being careful that, you know, do the research and see what is it? Because if you don't know what you're doing and you toss something like that, it could be a big mistake. Yeah, you have to look at everything. You have to look at everything that you find because you can throw away things that you just thought were trash. Hmm. Uh, we found, as an example, a few months ago, I found this little piece of metal. It was all bent up. It was thin. It was aluminum. Uh, and we thought it was just an aluminum piece of can. It was, it was basically garbage in my mind. Mm -hmm. But when I bring everything with me, you take all your trash back home with you. I got home, and I, I opened it. I unbent it, looked at it, and I saw a name on there. So then I cleaned it all up. It turns out that the name on there was from a name of an old town that doesn't even exist anymore. Over the centuries, that town got absorbed into other towns. So it was kind of a historic piece of a town that is, hasn't been in existence for 150 years. So what I thought was trash at first glance by investigating just a little bit is now you know, a pretty special piece to me. It's the story, I think. That's what really makes it. I mean, I was telling earlier today uh, on our Kiliko Coffee Hour uh, about how the story intertwines with the item that you're finding and the experience that you're making while you're out hunting. What, what are some common questions? Because you, you do have a very popular YouTube channel. Uh, when people are writing you, especially beginners uh, that are getting into metal detecting or treasure hunting, what are some of the questions about IDing? What, what, are, what are they lost at? And what are you responding when you respond to these fans, these viewers? Yeah, I mean, IDing, like I said, is a fun thing. You definitely get better the more you do it, like anything mm -hmm. else. You know, a lot of things, someone emailed me just yesterday with a big circle in his hand. He said, what is this? I don't know what it is. And I instantly knew it was a bridal rosette because I've seen them, I've dug them. You do get better and better as you do it. But mm -hmm. I still get dumped all the time, Mark. I mean, who knows what every single mangled up piece of metal ever made is. I mean, you'd be a, you'd be a genius. Right. You do have to do some investigating work. And if you mm -hmm. don't know what it is, at least you'll know what avenues to go down to figure it out. Uh, and it gets easier and easier, as, uh, you know, in this day and age. You, like I said, you can go right on the Facebook. I could probably name you three, four Facebook groups. Mm -hmm. You can throw almost anything up. And someone's going to tell you within an hour what it is. You got 18, 20,000 members in those groups. And each person has that little bit of knowledge, but collectively as a community, we are experts. We would know anything you could find. Someone's going to know it because at one time or another, I might've found something and I spend an hour researching it and then I know what it is. And then you do that with a piece and someone else. So we all know what almost everything is collectively. You don't need a fancy, anything fancy, but a nice in focus picture with something else in the image for scale and someone's going to know what it is. And like I said, Reddit has some. I'm sure there's all sorts of them. The, the ID me is one I use a lot. And, and I use my own YouTube videos a lot. I mean, honestly, I have, you know, enough people watch it where even the video, I'll say, I don't know what this is. And I'll get a whole bunch of people comments and tell me what oh. it is. Sometimes they're wrong. Sometimes yeah. they're not. So, um, you know, but it, but it gives me ideas. You know, if 10 people tell me 10 different mm -hmm. things, I'll look up each of those 10 things and, and try to, you know, figure out which one it probably is. Well, if you're talking about IDing a coin, um, yeah, the first thing you got to do is a lot of times you got to clean it at least a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, Cleaning is a tough subject because if you, you, you can ruin things really easily. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're not sure, get a toothpick, gently rub little circles on it and slowly clean off that crud. Mm -hmm. It'll leave the patina, but you got to at least knock that crud off to be able to even see it. Uh, there's an app that I use on my phone sometimes called Coinoscope. It's a free app they have in the app store. You take a picture of any coin, doesn't matter if it's a US coin, it was made in New Zealand, wherever. You take a picture, it queries its database and will give you the three or four most likely coins of what that is. Wow. Uh, I use that a lot when we find foreign coins because I don't mm -hmm. know all the foreign coins. And so are you using any kind of magnifying glasses, the ones with lights on it? Because I know uh, Kelly Goat just uh, stocked some new products that are like that with magnifying glasses and have uh, certain angles that you could see things. Is that something that you incorporate sometimes or is it mainly naked eye? I didn't know you had that. I would. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I still do old school. I carry, okay. a pair, I carry a pair of reading glasses around with me in my bag. Okay. I actually incorporate it into my videos. I call them the glasses of shame. <laughs> Real gaudy old lady leopard print glasses. 
And I tell all the guys, I said, look, if you can't wait till you get home and you got to do this right now, you got to be shamed with these gaudy glasses. I love it. That's so, so you great. Know, these glasses of shame reading glasses, just like two times magnification or whatever. Wow. And then I carry a real bright flashlight in my bag, shine it across the face. It'll at least let you see the bust or see something that you just physically can't see with your naked eye. And, and so, do you ever uh, use a microscope? I've seen some people do this with uh, not the crazy ones, but the electronic ones that connect your computer and I you have, can take, yeah. you have one of those, okay. Yeah, I have one. I don't use it a lot. It, it, okay. it goes a little too magnified for me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, once you get in too close, well then I don't even know what I'm looking at, but right. they are, well, a lot of guys I know that sell coins online use them to like, get in really close to like one little letter and say like, look how it's crooked. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, the, digital micro, the, the digital microscopes, uh, I do own one. Uh, they are cool, but uh, I don't use them a lot in my ID. I try not to go too much more than like three, four times magnification because then it's like way up in your face and you lose perspective. Yeah. For me, me. Yeah. I, I could see that. Well, I think that's a lot of great information. And well, so, and you, you talked about electrolysis and I think that's a very popular cleaning method. One question I have there is when to know when to do it or not. And then maybe there's other uh, less harsh cleaning methods with like a jewelry cleaner. So if you want to talk maybe about a couple of those and when to and when not to. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I, like I said, electrolysis, I use it mostly on iron relics. Uh, I use a horseshoes on ax heads on anything like that iron. You usually, you can't hurt the iron. It's just going to take the rust off unless it's so rusted that the rust is holding it together. Like I talked about earlier, you have to inspect it. You got to look at it and see if it's structurally sound. Uh, I will use it on coins occasionally, old brown, on bronze coins, never silver, never. Mm. On bronze coins, I might to knock that corrosion off, but then I've really got to watch it. I'll put it on a really low amperage, maybe two amps. I'll put it in for five minutes, take it out, brush it off, re-look at it again. I try, I try to only use it for the harshest of corrosion, and then I'll go at it with a toothpick or uh, Andre's pencils, which are a great little tool. Mm. Uh, and it's not going to hurt the metal, but just knock off the, 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 the corrosion. You know, you have to think about things too, where that corrosion, again, it's a chemical, it's a, it's a chemical change. It actually, you know, sticks to the metal. It's part of the metal. So when you knock those corrosion bumps, bumps off, you're actually pitting the object because it's part of it now. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you're better off not knocking some of it off. You got to look at it. Take your time. It might you might get all the corrosion off, but it looks worse. It's all cratered and everything like that. Mm -hmm. so take your time. I always say practice on some wheat pennies. Something mm -hmm. that you don't care if you're going to ruin it. Um, I do a lot of cleaning on buttons, and some buttons are incredibly valuable. And you don't want to ruin a five thousand dollar button because you cleaned it wrong. Practice on junkier buttons. But, you know, practice, 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 like, like anything in life. You know, you, you start to get better as you do it. But when you first start off, be gentle, take your time, use a toothpick, small circles, won't hurt it. Um, you know, silver coins, just put them under water with a little soapy water, um, very gently. I like that black. If you rub too hard, you rub that black off. You know, in the end of the day, it's your thing. So whatever you want it to look like. But I'd hate for you to go too far right off the bat and then you're unhappy with it. Because once you do it, you can't go back. What kind of soap, uh, you were talking about soap and water. Um, is, it, is there a kind of soap, is it just detergent? Um, or do you have to be careful? I use a Dawn dish soap, fragrance okay. free. It's okay. like the kind of on like ducks when there's an oil spill. Mm -hmm. basic. It just helps with some of the oils, helps get some of the dirt off, but it doesn't bother anything. Okay. I use it on tumbler all the time. I'll tumble modern coins, uh, plain flat buttons. I'll tumble them. I'll put them in. I tumble it with crushed walnut shells because I mm -hmm. found river bricks will sometimes scratch things up. So I use crushed walnut shells. You can buy on Amazon pretty cheap. Put them in there with water, Dawn dish soap. That's it. Run it for an hour or so. And they come out like butter. They're beautiful. Mm -hmm. The brass is there. They're shiny. Mm -hmm. um, but my really old stuff for me, I don't want my stuff to be shiny and pretty. I want it to look old. Mm -hmm. I love I like when, when, when you have a coin or a button and there's relief on there, I like for there to be dirt, you know, light powdery dirt in the low areas, mm -hmm. which see the relief high areas so much better. 
once you get that thing wet, whether you just spray it, put it in the sink, it takes all the dirt out and then it starts to look flat. You lose that relief. You lose that 3D image that it had. So that's why I get yelled at a lot in my videos. Oh, stop doing this with a toothbrush. Yeah. Just spray it with water. Use water. No. I, always say, no, I don't use water. I'll use water for a silver coin. I'll use water occasionally on something coppery. But for the most part, I like to work with it dry. I like the dirt to stay in those low points because that's the way I like it to look. You like character. You want your find to have character, that true grit. Well, just like the uh, previous tip on IDing, is there one big piece of advice with cleaning that you would give, uh, especially for newbies or people right now that are stuck at home and uh, maybe want to start getting into this? Yeah, well, like I said, you sort of have to know if you can figure out what kind of metal you have. Mm -hmm. There's certain things you don't want to do. If you have a piece of iron, you can use electrolysis. That, that does intimidate a lot of people. I know Kelly Cosell's a little homemade electrolysis kit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, but sometimes, some people are just nervous. Electricity, uh, you know, yeah. plugging it in the wall. And, and I get it. It's intimidating. Yeah. Uh, products out there. I use one called uh, the Darn It Mark. I'll put it in the show notes. <laughs> Yeah. The gel. You put this gel on there, you put it in a Ziploc bag and seal it. It'll slowly take the rust off, almost like a rust oh. oil, but wow. it's not as uh, That works really good. Uh, there's another one. It's a powder that I bought called, ah, mm -hmm. um, uh, you caught me off guard. I figured <laughs> the powder, really cheap. You mix it. It almost becomes like a stronger vitamin yeah. C sort of a thing, like a, okay. just a light acid. It'll slowly take off some of that corrosion if you're afraid of electrolysis, which does work faster. Uh, for bigger objects, horseshoes, axe heads, which I love to find, uh, electrolysis tank is the, is the best way to go. It's big. You connect it. You just leave it in there. You won't hurt the object. Um, just leave it in there. It'll take all that rust off. You get a light wire brush. You clean it all up. It looks great. And then you got to coat it with something because once you bring it down to that bare metal, literally – Within a minute, rust comes back onto it again. It's exposed to the air. So you have to put a barrier on there right away. And there's all kinds of products out there that'll just put a coating. Some oh. people will put like a carnauba wax to put something over it. Because once you get to look great, if you don't cover it quickly, uh, you know, it'll start to, you know, get, get rust again. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. Once you expose to the air. That's right. Uh, silver coins, I always recommend just water, some Dawn dish soap. I wouldn't do anything else to them. Okay. Uh, I like that black on there. If you, if you don't like that black tarnish, mm -hmm. I used to use this thing. It's like a magic eraser. I just rub it one direction. It'll take oh. that tarnish off. I'll use that sometimes if I find like a sterling spoon or something like that. But the coins, I like it. I leave the black on there. Uh, there's also <laughs> uh, you know, silver polish you can buy at the store. I tried to put chemicals on my coins if I can help it, but you know, I still have a lot of experience with a tarnish magic eraser. I find works great. It doesn't do any damage to the coin. One direction I try to go. I don't like to rub that in circles and basically smear things around. So rub one direction. And if, if you want to get that black off, uh, like, like sharpening a knife, uh, where you rub knife. in one direction. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was to say. Uh, even with the copper coins, um, you know, some people will, will, will go in a circle motion on the Indians. When I personally clean mine, I go one direction with it the whole time. Mm -hmm. One direction. So I'm cleaning it and I'm pushing it off. I'm pushing it. Mm -hmm. You go in, in, in circle patterns. What I found, if you're really picky, is that, you know, when you're brushing off that tiny little sand, you keep going in circles. Well, it's going to scratch it. It's going to scratch oh. it. So I almost, you know, push, lift it up, push, mm -hmm. lift it up, you know. You, you start to, you can get a good speed to it, but that way I'm always going one direction. I'm not mm -hmm. I recirculating those sand particles. And well, the pencils, what, what, how do you use the pencils uh, with Andre's oh, pencils? Well, what, they're, they're not regular pencils. They're, they're mm -hmm. really cool. One of them is a steel wool pencil tip that you sharpen to a fine point. So you can really get in with this steel wool and clean areas instead of using a Brillo pad and scratching it all up. Oh. One of them is like a rubber tip that you scratch to a fine tip to really get in fine detail. If you have a button and there's an eagle, he's wearing a shield, you can actually get in between every line of the shield. Wow. And clean that. You can't do that with, with most other things. 
Before I learned on the Andre's pencils, I literally would use a regular pencil, sharpen it real tight, same thing, go one direction. It would wow. leave, it would leave the, the carbon on there. Yep. And once I got it, I would get my magic eraser and just erase the carbon. So this uh, takes me to the back and erase the pencil marks on there. Sounds like um, something we need to be carrying then. They're, they're great. One of them is a copper tip, real sharp copper tip. Wow. You actually get in super tight, knock out corrosion. Uh, wow. They're a little pricey, but they'll last, you know, a one set's lasted me a year and a half so far, and wow. I barely surface. You know, it's such small area. Well, that that's great, uh, Jason. Thank you so much for uh, your time and, and giving us some tips right now when we could probably use it the most. Uh, again, do you want to give a shout out to your channels, the Quarter Hoarder on YouTube and any other channels uh, before we end the segment? Yeah, I mean, me and my gang, uh, there's, there's five of us for the most part. Uh, some of us have other channels. My one buddy, the Nickel Nibbler, has a channel. Uh, my other buddy, PA Pirate Paul, has a channel. My other brother, Charlie, uh, Charlie the Relic Hunter, you know, he has a channel. Uh, we've all met through my channel. I usually put links in my videos for them. But just close friends knocking on old houses, old farms, looking for just incredible old pieces of history. Uh, that's all it's about. So, um, you know, anyone out there is welcome to check it out. And, uh, you know, you might, you might just like it. Oh, awesome. Well, make sure we send people over to like, subscribe, and follow your videos. Again, this is Jason Quarter Hoarder, who is a Kellyco VIP test team member. That was a long-winded, uh, uh, you know, phrase or title I'll give you. But thank a, you so much. <laughs> what was that? I'm a VIP. I'm a VIP. <laughs> Yes, you are. Yes, you are. So thank you again. Uh, and I can't wait to uh, do the next segment where we're going to talk about how do you display all this great stuff. So we'll have to bring you back on. <laughs> all right. Sounds good. Mike. All right, Jason. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Mark.